1995, the world changed when a small meteor landed near the Tiber River in Italy. This meteor brought with it the most valuable and deadly crystal known to mankind, Tiberium. While the recently formed Global Defense Initiative claimed to have named the crystal after the Tiber River from which it was found, Kane, the leader of another organization called the Brotherhood of Nod, claimed to have named it after Tiberius Drusus Caesar. While GDI saw Tiberium as a scientific anomaly, Kane saw it as the key to humanity's future. To that end, Nod became the first to develop efficient methods for harvesting and refining the crystal, generating great wealth for the organization and further increasing its influence across the globe, especially in third world nations. Many outside the Brotherhood believe the organization to be a newly risen power, led by a charismatic madman. But Nod placed its initial founding to before 1800 BC. Cain wasn't just seen as the leader of the Brotherhood, but as a prophet and messiah. One who has been around since Nod's beginning. With a small cult of followers, they manipulated events from the shadows, eventually becoming a global movement that now directly challenged the established world order. The Brotherhood of Nod wasn't just a collection of nations like GDI, it was a religious movement, one that pulled heavily from the Abrahamic religions. Of course, every religion needs a house of worship, and the Brotherhoods would be the Temple of Nod. The Scorpion was the symbol of the Brotherhood, and no other building fully embodied the arachnid like the Temple of Nod. The main structure of the temple acted as the body of the Scorpion, made of strong metal and lined with red and black stained glass windows at the roof. Stained glass windows also adorned the entrance of the temple. The concrete foundation extended beyond the main body of the structure, forming pincers at the building's entrance. On each side of the temple, there were three decorative flying buttresses, which resembled a scorpion's legs. Though it should be noted that scorpions have a total of eight legs, not six. At the back of the temple was a silo, which represented the scorpion's tail. This tail had a pretty nasty sting, acting as a launch silo for nuclear missiles in Nod's arsenal. As for the interior, the temple featured a wide open hall with space for hundreds of Nod's congregation. Small TV monitors lined the building's support columns, and at the end of the hallway was an altar. Behind this altar was a set of TV screens, used to monitor combat operations or to aid in sermons. Sermons involved phrases like, peace through power, or brotherhood, unity, peace. Of course, this was just the ground floor of the temple, as the rest of the complex extended underground. This was because the temple didn't just act as a place for brotherhood members to receive the word of Cain. It also housed the central computer core that was the hub of all communications and the center of Nod Command. The nuclear missile housed at the temple extended to this underground facility too. A couple of temples featured more elaborate underground facilities. One was Cain's Temple Prime in Sarajevo, and another one located amongst some ancient ruins near Cairo. During the First Tiberium War, GDI Commando Nick Havoc Parker would make his way inside Cain's Temple in Cairo after it had been heavily damaged by an ion cannon. Havoc's goal? Rescue Sydney Mobius, daughter of the famed Tiberium research scientist Ignatio Mobius. From the ground floor, Havoc made his way down to the first lower level of the temple. At this level was a room with three empty chairs equipped with an array of electronics. These chairs were used by Kane's netrunners to hack into digital networks. On the second lower level was a pool of liquid Tiberium. This pool was only here due to the crack in the floor caused by the ion cannon strike. By this pool was a holographic console that Kane used to talk with the officers on this level. There was also a wall of display monitors and a battle map. The third lower level had many rooms, the first being a museum. The museum featured glass casings that held various artifacts. A couple of cases contained an animal skull. The skull seemed to be that of a bull. Another case holds what looks to be an ancient pot. One case had a green rock inside it, which I believe might be a piece of the meteorite that brought Tiberium to Earth. The last case had the most interesting item, a rock with a painting of two human figures. 
One human is on the ground, looking up at the person standing over him. The standing human looks as if he's about to kill the other one on the ground. I believe this rock painting is a depiction of the biblical figures Cain and Abel. The story being that Cain was jealous of his brother, Abel, whose offering to God was most favored. Cain murdered his brother Abel, and for this, he was condemned by God to be a wanderer, ultimately settling in the land of Nod. Along the walls of the museum are paintings, one showing Soviet apocalypse tanks from Red Alert 2, which I believe is more of an easter egg, as this painting can be seen inside other buildings throughout Renegade's campaign. Beyond the museum was a bar and lounge area for all Nod's personnel at the temple to relax, as well as get something to eat and drink. There were three other rooms connected to this bar and lounge. The first was a green screen room, where Kane and other Nod personnel created propaganda to entice people to join the Brotherhood and oppose GDI. The second room was storage for Nod's experimental Volt Auto Rifle. But it was not limited to storage, for in the middle of this room was a liquid container that held the body of Kane's former second-in-command, Seth. Seth's body acted as a trophy for Kane. More importantly, it served as a warning to all other high-ranking Nod commanders of their fate should they ever try to circumvent Kane's authority. The last area was Kane's personal chambers. Upon entering, having encountered a holographic console in front of a receptionist's desk. A couch and table were on one side of this room, with a light-up scorpion tail statue on the other, near Kane's bedroom. Inside the bedroom was a lavish bed for the leader of Nod. A camera was located near the foot of this bed, which I'm just gonna say was used to make more adult propaganda. A green key card found in this room gave Havoc access to other facilities of the temple. Behind the bar and lounge was a hallway that led to an elevator, which took the user down to the mission control room of the temple, arrayed with various computer consoles. A few giant TV screens were mounted on the walls. Behind the mission control was a lobby with various living quarters for high-ranking personnel and scientists. This included bath and shower rooms. The most unique of these quarters had a small blossom tree. Beyond these living quarters was a lab, where Nod scientists conducted Tiberium experiments on willing and unwilling human subjects. The results of these experiments were mutant soldiers called Templars, who were held in suspension inside Tiberium vats. Havoc had to fight an entire squad of these Templars before taking an elevator further underground. Havoc found himself inside an ancient crypt filled with a Tiberium haze. He was constantly under attack by mutated initiate and acolyte soldiers. In this crypt, Havoc stumbled upon the most important room, which contained a sarcophagus flanked by a couple of Tiberium crystals. On the wall behind the sarcophagus was a mural depicting Cain slaying his brother Abel. This mural is interesting, as the depiction of the biblical Cain has physical similarities to the leader of the Brotherhood. Upon entering the sanctuary, Havoc was told by Cain that he treads on holy ground. Bow your head, Parker. You walk on hallowed ground. How disappointing to see that you have no sense of history. This is the original site of the Brotherhood's temple, the true source of Nod's power. You're making this up as you go along, aren't you? I didn't think you would understand the significance. A man of your intelligence couldn't possibly comprehend. This could mean that the sarcophagus contained the remains of Abel, though Havoc had no time to ponder the prospect. After making his way through a pipe, and then up a spiral ramp, Havoc found Sydney in a lab. Not scientist Elena Petrova was just beginning the process of transforming Sydney into a mutant. Petrova had already, willingly, transformed herself into one. Havoc then fought and defeated Petrova, freeing Sydney. The two made their escape through the temple's missile silo, taking elevators inside the silo back up to the ground level. The nuclear missile was remotely activated for launch by Kane himself. Sydney was able to sabotage the launch, resulting in the missile exploding underground below the temple, just as she and Havoc made their way outside the building. Now, as I previously mentioned, I don't think all Temples of Nod had such an elaborate underground network, just the ones where Cain spent most of his time. And there were other events throughout the First Tiberium War that involved the Temples. 
During a covert operation called Under Siege, a Nod base was surrounded by GDI forces. A GDI base nearby meant that even if the Nod defenders could hold off the first wave, they could still be overrun by the second wave from the base. The Nod commander tore down a few of his buildings to free up power for the Temple of Nod. Without sufficient power, the temple couldn't launch its nuclear missile. Once ready, the commander launched the temple's missile, destroying the GDI base. Needing extra funds, the commander sold off other buildings, and even used a stealth tank to ransack a nearby civilian village. With these funds, the commander was able to fly in reinforcements and defeat the GDI forces that surrounded the base. Another covert operation, entitled Ground Zero, involved world leaders meeting for the Global Peace Conference somewhere in Europe. A Temple of Nod, secretly constructed in the region, launched a nuclear missile at the conference. GDI detected the launch and sent in a small force of troops to retrieve the delegates and escort them away from Ground Zero. By fighting through additional Nod forces, the surviving delegates were loaded onto a transport helicopter and exfiltrated from the area. To complete the takeover of the African continent, Kane ordered his best field commander to expel GDI forces from South Africa and construct a new temple in the country. If the Nod commander had succeeded, the temple would be used to launch a nuclear strike on the GDI forces defending the country. Afterwards, Kane would use his netrunners at the newly built temple to hack into GDI's orbital defense matrix and then use the Ion Cannon to destroy a historical landmark in either Western Europe or the United States. In the later stages of the First Tiberium War, GDI had gained the upper hand against the Brotherhood, especially in Europe. Nod forces were pushed back on all fronts, retreating to Sarajevo where they would make a final stand at Temple Prime. Initially, GDI held off on launching an assault on the Nod Fortress, but a covert operative infiltrated the temple and confirmed that Kane himself was present inside, surrounded by his most loyal followers. A fierce battle ensued, but GDI was able to destroy most of Nod's forces surrounding Temple Prime. However, taking the temple itself would be difficult, and instead of sacrificing more of their own troops to do so, the GDI commander called in an ion strike to wipe the temple off the map. Though Temple Prime had been destroyed, and Kane was presumed dead, Nod forces throughout Europe still put up a resistance against GDI. One group even attempted to rebuild a Temple of Nod armed with a nuclear missile. The GDI covert operation to prevent this was called Hell's Fury. After establishing a base in the region, the GDI commander waited for one Agent Delphi to find the exact location of the temple. Once discovered, GDI forces moved in and destroyed it. After being destroyed by the Ion Cannon, GDI forces began excavating the remains of Temple Prime. This excavation would take a long time, as GDI had not realized the extent of Nod's network of underground facilities. One of the artifacts dug up was a rock slab with a depiction of the biblical Cain murdering his brother Abel. Though placed in a museum, GDI never fully understood its value to the Brotherhood, or their supposedly deceased prophet. After the First Tiberium War, the Brotherhood of Nod was fractured, with various generals fighting amongst themselves for total control over the organization. In 2030, the leader of the Black Hand, Anton Slavik, proved to be the victor, capturing his nemesis Hassan, whose public execution was scheduled at one of Nod's newly designed temples. The new temples of Nod still resembled a scorpion, though with some notable changes. The design of the building took inspiration from the Sydney Opera House, with its overlapping vaulted roof segments. It was made of precast concrete with overlapping steel trusses. A sensor tower acted as the temple's tail, replacing the missile silo of the previous ones. This was due to the Brotherhood no longer storing their nuclear weapons at the temple. The hall of the new temple was more spacious and grander, with giant pillars rising high up toward a glass ceiling. Brotherhood flags hung down from this ceiling in front of the pillars. At the end of the hall was a stage, with a giant television screen set on the back wall above the stage. A pedestal shaped like a scorpion's tail sat in the middle of the stage, used by Nod leaders to give a sermon or other speech to their followers. 
As Slavic was about to execute Hassan, Kane appeared on the TV behind him, revealing to all of the Brotherhood that he lived. After Slavic carried out his execution, Kane made a proclamation to destroy GDI, kicking off the Second Tiberium War. Kane would lead the Brotherhood from his base near Cairo. After all these years, GDI still maintained a presence at Sarajevo, near the site of Kane's previous temple. Their continued excavations of the site meant they were close to discovering an alien-designed ship, built by the Brotherhood at the end of the First Tiberium War. Slavic and his forces arrived in the region and successfully destroyed the GDI base at Sarajevo, halting any excavation efforts and bringing the region back under Nod's control. Unfortunately for Slavic, another Brotherhood general named Vega took the alien warship. Because Vega had no idea how to fly it, the aircraft ended up crashing in New Mexico, where it would later be captured by GDI. Vega paid for his incompetence when Kay nuked the general's base to prevent it from falling into the hands of GDI. Throughout the Second Tiberium War, commanders would come across abandoned bases from the First War. Some of the Brotherhood bases had damaged, but still standing, temples of Nod. Within the halls of the Second War temples, Nod continued its Tiberium experiments, and conducted other cutting-edge research. The technology at the temple was required for a Nod commander to build a Cyborg Commando, the most powerful infantry unit in their arsenal. In addition, mutant hijackers could only be recruited from bases where a temple was present. While the Second War temples of Nod were no longer used to launch nuclear missiles, they could construct and deploy Hunter-Seeker droids. Also used by the Global Defense Initiative, the Hunter-Seeker was a lightning-fast drone unit that was deployed to, quote, clean up the battlefield. These droids would randomly search out an enemy unit or structure and latch onto it. Once attached, the Hunter-Seeker droid would self-destruct, destroying itself and the object it was attached to. Once released, the droid could not be controlled, automatically seeking its prey. With the exception of GDI's Firestorm Wall, nothing could stop a Hunter Seeker, not even an Ion Storm. In addition, the Hunter Seeker's advanced sensors meant the droid could detect and destroy stealth units and structures. These droids would only be used during the Second Tiberium War and resulting Firestorm Crisis. They would later be phased out due to commanders not having the ability to fully control them upon release. The Second Tiberium War was much shorter than the first one, with the Brotherhood defeated by the Global Defense Initiative again. Kane's plan to launch a world-altering missile to convert all of Earth's carbon-based life to Tiberium-based life was halted by GDI Commander Michael McNeil at the launch facility in Cairo. Kane was placed in stasis to recover from the injuries he sustained during his fight with McNeil. Anton Slavic served as Kane's successor, though he had trouble keeping the Brotherhood together. Things would become even more dire when Cabal, Nod's own electronic video agent, rebelled against the organization and humanity in general. Only by forging a temporary alliance with GDI would both factions succeed in defeating Cabal and its cyborg rebellion. After Cabal's primary core was destroyed, Anton Slavic gave an inspirational speech to the Brotherhood inside one of Nod's temples. Anton Slavic held the Brotherhood together for a time, but his death at the hands of an assassin caused Nod to once again fracture into various sub-factions. When Kane emerged from stasis in the year 2034, he set to work reunifying his organization, with the help of his very own newly created AI called Legion. By 2047, Kane had successfully reunified and rebuilt the Brotherhood, and set plans in motion to begin a third Tiberium War against GDI. Part of Kane's reunification efforts involved the reconstruction of Temple Prime in Sarajevo. GDI didn't consider the Brotherhood of Nod to be a major threat, and so primarily focused on Tiberium abatement efforts. This enabled Nod to rebuild Temple Prime unnoticed with Kane using it as his headquarters from which to lead the Brotherhood once more. While the first war version of Temple Prime looked no different from any other temple, the new one constructed before the Third Tiberium War was wholly unique. The primary feature was a cylindrical-shaped building flanked by two large columns, both of which were reminiscent of the new Obelisk of Light defensive structure. Both the columns and the round building in the middle were adorned with red and black stained glass windows. 
The interior of the temple seemed to be styled in neo-Gothic architecture, with stone pillars alongside advanced data processors. Behind Temple Prime was a large crater filled with Tiberium, presumably the exact spot where the first Temple Prime once stood many years ago. The standard temples of Nod during this time were a combination of the first and second Tiberium War temple designs. It featured the flying buttresses of the first War Temple, combined with the tail-shaped tower of the second War Temple. In front of the temple was an underground silo to store nuclear missiles. When ready to launch, the missile would rise fully out of the silo. However, nuclear missiles would only be launched from the temples later on during the Third Tiberium War, as the Brotherhood initially concentrated most of their arsenal at a newly built launch facility near Cairo. This did not mean that the Temple of Nob was just there for religious purposes. Inside were powerful backup generators and control systems designed to quickly restore power to a Nod base. If a Brotherhood building or vehicular unit was hit by an EMP weapon, the Temple of Nod's master computer countermeasures could be activated, restoring power to any of the affected units and structures. In addition, if a Nod commander's radar had been brought offline by an EMP strike, the computer countermeasures would restore power to it as well, bringing the radar back online. The Black Hand sub-faction was comprised of the most devout Nod followers. Because of this, they placed a greater importance on the Temples of Nod, so much so that they would go out of their way to construct some decoys. The decoy version looked the same as a real temple, though it was far less expensive to build. While the decoy had its own nuclear launch countdown, it didn't actually have any nuclear missiles stored beneath it. It was all a ruse to draw their enemy's attention to the decoy, away from a real temple or other important asset of the Black Hand. The decoy could be sold when no longer needed, though it would not refund any credits. The decoy was also not as heavily armored as a real temple. The Third Tiberium War would begin with the Brotherhood disabling GDI's ASAT defense network and destroying the GDSS Philadelphia using a nuclear missile launched from their Cairo facility. GDI would be put on the defensive, with their blue zones coming under heavy assault by Nod forces. GDI was able to rebuff these assaults and proceeded to go on a counter-offensive against the Brotherhood. Part of this counter-offensive was to destroy Nod's launch facility in Cairo, where the organization concentrated the majority of its nuclear arsenal. With Nod now on the defensive, GDI feared they would launch their full complement of nukes, and so needed to take out this facility as quickly as possible. Nod has consolidated its nuclear arsenal at its Cairo nuke facility, what was once a mobile nuclear force is now a massive central arsenal. The reason for the centralization of Nod's nukes is not known, although speculation ranges from paranoia, Kane afraid that his commanders might rebel and use nukes on Kane loyalists, to preparation for some unknown operational contingency, or a gain in efficiency of operations. Whatever the reason, we do know one thing for sure. Take out the Cairo facility, and we deprive Nod of its nuclear capability. When GDI forces arrived outside the facility, they noticed it was heavily guarded, making a frontal assault difficult. In addition, the Brotherhood prepared to launch one of their nukes, which GDI High Command deemed unacceptable. The GDI commander charged with destroying the facility had to eliminate Nod's power plants to bring the facility offline, delaying the launch of any missiles. This bought the commander time to flank around the facility's heavily guarded entrance and destroy the launch complex. With the loss of the Cairo launch facility, the Brotherhood's remaining nuclear weapons were located at a Temple of Nod constructed right next to Kane's Temple Prime near Sarajevo. The first assault against Kane's Sarajevo fortress failed thanks to the arrival of Nod reinforcements. Reinforcements that would later attempt their own assault against the fortress, one that was successfully repelled by the actions of an unnamed Nod commander who was loyal to Kane. GDI's second assault on Temple Prime proved successful, despite the looming threat of the nuclear-armed Temple of Nod next door, with this temple being destroyed during the battle. As for Temple Prime itself, GDI Director Redmond Boyle ordered its destruction using the Ion Cannon. The Ion Disruption Field Generators guarding the temple had been destroyed, and the Ion Cannon strike succeeded in wiping Temple Prime off the map. Unbeknownst to GDI, a liquid Tiberium device was hidden beneath the temple, the Ion Cannon Strike caused it to detonate, resulting in a massive explosion that not only caused significant collateral damage, 
but acted as a signal for an alien race called the Skrin to begin their invasion of Earth. With Kane believed killed at Temple Prime, General Killian Katar assumed leadership over the Brotherhood. One of her first priorities was to make the Brotherhood a nuclear power once more, by stealing nuclear weapons from GDI's arsenal. Long ago, GDI vowed that they would never use nuclear weapons, no matter how dire the situation. Still, they always kept a stockpile of warheads and ICBMs in remote areas of the world, just in case they changed their mind. Out near the red zone of the Australian outback, GDI was in the process of moving some of their nuclear warheads. Killian saw this as the perfect opportunity to steal them, and tasked an unnamed Nod commander to retrieve the warheads. The commander was successful, eliminating the convoy's armed escorts and bringing them over to a stealth Nod outpost in the region. However, this was the exact moment that the Skrin arrived on Earth, and the small Nod strike force had to defend their position from both GDI and alien forces while awaiting extraction via Nod carryalls. While the Brotherhood had the nuclear weapons, they needed the codes in order to actually launch them. Nod would acquire these codes from a GDI lab near the Sydney city wall. Killian cut a deal with GDI, helping them defend the city from the alien invaders. While GDI and their Nod allies were preoccupied with holding back the Skrin, a Nod saboteur successfully infiltrated the lab and retrieved the launch codes. Even after acquiring the nuclear launch codes, Nod continued to help GDI defend Sydney. GDI concluded that the city would eventually fall to the invaders, and began evacuating civilians. Nod forces were tasked with defending Ox transports as they flew civilians out over downtown Sydney. All was going according to plan, until Kane made contact with the Nod commander. I know it's not you, commander, but whoever is responsible for this treachery will feel my wrath. In the meantime, obliterate what remains of GDI. Nuke them! If you wish. With permission from Kane, the Nod commander used the nuclear missile located at the nearby Temple of Nod to destroy the GDI base defending the city. With the destruction of this base, the alliance between Nod and GDI was officially over, with the city's fall to the Skrin all but assured. For her betrayal, Kane demanded that Killian be captured and those loyal to her eliminated. The unnamed Nod commander captured a rebel base below Ayers Rock the location of Killian's headquarters. After building up a strong enough force to assault Killian's primary base, the Nod commander captured or destroyed the Temple of Nod in front of Killian's headquarters, causing the rest of her forces to surrender and swear allegiance to Kane. GDI forces arrived in the region shortly afterward, seeking revenge for what happened in Sydney. If the commander had captured Killian's Temple of Nod, he could use it to launch nuclear missiles against the GDI Avengers ultimately defeating them and securing Ayers Rock in the name of Cain. The last major instance involving the use of a Temple of Nod during the Third Tiberium War occurred at Ground Zero of the Tiber Riverbed. The Skrin had established an alien control node here, which kept all their forces on Earth functioning by channeling an exotic Tiberium-based radiation. GDI believed that if the control node could be destroyed, then the entire invasion would be brought to an end. The Brotherhood of Nod suspected the same thing, and so established a base in the region and built a Temple of Nod armed with a nuclear missile to prevent GDI from destroying the node. This defensive action ultimately failed though, with the Temple and Control node being destroyed, bringing the alien invasion to an end. While the Brotherhood may not have prevented GDI from destroying the alien Control node, they were able to capture the last of the Skrin's Threshold Towers. Threshold Tower 19, now known as Kane's Tower, resides off the southern coast of Italy in the Mediterranean Red Zone. Completely immune to human attack, this tower represents the last true bastion of the Brotherhood of Nod, a shadow of its former self in the aftermath of the Third Tiberium War. But as Kane himself said, this is how it should be, for only the chosen few would be allowed into the Promised Land through Ascension, the secrets to which can only be unlocked within Kane's Tower the new, and perhaps even the last, Temple of Nod. <laughs>